Hi guys, Jordan here with Motion Array, and today we're gonna be showing you how to get amazing looking end credits right inside of Premiere Pro with tips like how do you separate your heading from your subheading effectively to make it look really nice and classy, and how do you get this nice little negative space divide here with text floating off to either side. Thankfully, these effects are really easy to pull off, and they utilize some design principles that we're gonna be going over that you can save and use for all your future projects. So let's jump into it. Okay guys, so here we are inside of Premiere Pro. And let's start building out our end credit sequence. We gotta add some text. So there's two ways that you can add text. Go to your Essential Graphics panel. If you can't find that, go up to Window, Essential Graphics, and click on that to bring it up wherever it is in your workspace. Make sure that you're in the Edit section and then click here on this little new page that says New Layer. And you can create a new piece of text really easily. Uh, there's a second way that you can add text though, and that's just simply go Control or Command if you're on a Mac and also hit the T key does exactly the same thing. You'll notice that the text comes up in two separate places. It comes up as a layer within your timeline here, but it also comes up as a layer within your essential graphics panel. We're just gonna keep that in mind for now. It'll come into play later, but let's start working with our text to create the actual end credit sequence. We gotta give the title of what somebody did and then the person who filled that role. So let's start with the director and then say that, hey, that was me. I was the director of this imaginary film. And then you want to center it so that it's not stemming from the left. It's all nice and centered. So go down here underneath text. You'll see that there's these center left and right aligned texts. Just hit center aligned text here, just like you do in a word processing document. And perfect. You got your piece of text here. It's looking nice and fancy. But now if you want to get it to the center, it, there's no snapping features to help you know that you got it directly centered. So there's another feature that you should use. I'm just going to pull this off to the side so you can really see what's happening. Underneath a line and transform, you can see that there's the vertical and horizontal center features. Just click on those and your text automatically just gets vertically and horizontally centered. Nice and simple. Uh, it's a little bit small, so I'm going to increase the size here by going right beside where uh, these center line text feature was here and uh, just make it a little bit bigger. So for me, 67, 68 looks about right. Cool. So we're getting somewhere. Uh, next thing that you want to do is stylize this text so that it looks exactly the way you want it to. You want it to look professional, but you also want it to look like the uh, story that you're telling, like it's in line with what you've been doing up until now. So. To change your font, just go underneath text here and uh, you can really choose whatever font you want. This is less, you know, a right or a wrong thing and more what works best within your project. So if you're doing a period piece, for example, and you want it to look like, hey, this is ancient Rome or ancient Greece, you can choose a, a font like uh, Archaeologaps. Is that how you say it? Archaeologicaps? Uh, you can choose something a little bit more, uh, ooh, like something futuristic. Lado looks pretty nice. That's kind of cool. Uh, but the font that I'm going to be using is called Railway. Uh, it's a really fantastic font, personal favorite of mine. There it is, perfect. So it's starting to look good. That's in line with our, our vision and sort of the feeling that we want. Uh, but now in order to stylize it further, what we wanna do is we wanna separate the role from the person who filled it. Uh, and that's a really simple thing to do. Easy way to do that is just highlight one of those two and then go down here underneath the font, there's the font style, and you can change that to give a different sort of look, to really differentiate it. That's a little bit extreme. Uh, you can just use your mouse wheel and you can kind of scroll through them to start to see a little bit of a instant change here. Medium looks about right for me. Yeah, I'm, I'm really liking that look. Uh, so now what we want to do is we want to actually create the rolling feature. Um, so our text looks nice, but we want it to roll up and down. Uh, you actually don't have to do any keyframing with motion or transform or anything. It's a really simple thing that's baked into the essential graphics panel. Uh, what you want to do is you'll probably have one or more layers highlighted here within your central graphics panel. Just you got to click off of that. So diselect by just clicking anywhere off of it. And now directly underneath everything, you should see a little feature here called roll. Click on that and automatically you're going to start to have a rolling feature without doing any work. And the best part about this is that there are features that you can use like uh, start off screen, end off screen, you can have pre-roll, post-roll, you can ease. You can do a lot of fancy stuff, but just the basic way how you, you can use this is it starts off screen, ends off screen, and you can just click and drag this longer to make the entire process longer and slower, or you can drag it back here to make it shorter and everything happens a lot quicker. Now, the other piece that's amazing with this is that it just recognizes the text that's inside of your uh, text box here inside of your layer. And so let's say we add a new piece of text by taking our uh, type tool and clicking anywhere within the frame here. Let's add a new piece of text. Uh, so let's say we want the cast to be the next thing that we cover. Uh, 
click and uh, let's center that. And now we can see that it, the cast is actually the thing that determines when we're finally off screen and when this role is actually finished. So it's a really cool feature because you can just start adding and keep adding more and more stuff and the role feature will automatically just know when the end is. It's pretty cool that way. Uh, the kicker is though, it's gotta be within this layer here. Everything's gotta be within this one layer on your timeline and kind of everything will be located here within your central graphics panel. If you have multiple layers here, uh, the role feature won't work. That'll just stay on its own. So you gotta make sure that when you're doing this, keep that layer highlighted, the one uh, credit sequence that you're working with. Cool, so let's start building out our cast now. And uh, what we're doing for this one is we're getting that nice look where there's that negative space in the center, and we have the uh, the role of the character and then the actor who played it on either side. I'm gonna show you a really easy way to build that out. Let's just start by clicking here to create a new piece of text. And let's just start uh, adding the roles of the characters in the film. So we have our protagonist, uh, we have our supporting character, cool. This is a little bit big, so I'm going to click and we're gonna reduce the size here a little bit. Ah, so that's an important thing. You can see here that I changed the size, but it didn't really do anything. You need to highlight everything and then it'll start to actually make the change. Or if you have your selection tool up, you just need to make sure that that box is highlighted and then it'll start to make those changes. So let's uh, change the size here, make it a little bit smaller. It's actually an important thing to go over here is that if you wanted to change the size, but you're noticing that you get like big changes with your mouse, uh, you can click and hold the control button and that same mouse movement will now make finer movements. So I'm holding control right now. If I take my mouse off control, you can see that the changes get a lot bigger, a lot faster. Cool. So now here we can see that this would look great if we were having it on the right side, but we want this to be on the left side. These are the characters within the movie, not the actors. Uh, it's a really simple fix. Go down to left align text here is what's selected. And we actually wanna change it to right align text. And that'll make it so that all the text is stemming from the right hand side. So if we were to add more text, it would start from the right hand side. But now what we can do here instead is uh, just align this so that it's kind of close to the center, but it's got a little bit of space away from the center. Cool, that looks pretty good. Now, in order to make the uh, right hand equivalent, there's actually a really simple way that you can do that. Just uh, click on this text box here and now hit Control or Command if you're on a Mac, C to copy, and then hit Control or Command V to paste and you're not gonna notice anything different except there's a little, uh, there's a duplicate here up in your essential graphics layers here. Uh, and if you move it around, you can see, oh, there is actually a duplicate here. Uh, but you don't actually wanna do anything with that duplicate yet. What you wanna do is just make sure that it's still highlighted. You haven't done anything differently. If you accidentally unhighlight it, you can just click on either one of these. It doesn't really matter. And now we're gonna switch it back to left align text. And boom, we get that perfect kind of uh, mirror image, even though you're still reading it from left to right. It's a mirror image in terms of its formatting and its shape. So now we can move this over here and we can start to get that nice little divide. But here's a little trick. Uh, if you just kind of move it around, you can't be certain that it's still perfectly on the same level. So what you can do is you can click and hold the shift button. And what that'll do is that'll make it so that the next mouse movement you make, it'll be locked to that axis. So if our next mouse movement was up and down, we'll only move it up and down, but we can't move it from left to right. And the opposite is true. If you wanna move it from left to right, just make that your next movement. And now we can't move it up or down. That's perfect. That is looking awesome. Cool, so now what we can do is we can just click on each of these individual uh, words here and we can fill out the names of our characters. So let's say, Joe Gardner, uh, give me a comment if you can tell which movie I just watched because of that protagonist name. Uh, let's say supporting character is uh, Sam Smith. I really hope I spelt those names correctly. If I didn't, uh, feel free to roast me in the comments. So now we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna change these up so that uh, they're kind of distinguished like our director from uh, the name of the person who filled that role. Uh, how that was separated there. So let's take all of these names here of the uh, characters in the film, highlight them by hitting Control A, and then let's uh, let's change up the layer style here. So let's say let's see what it looks like extra thin. That that actually looks pretty good. I'm not gonna lie, that's that's pretty nice right off the bat. But here's another thing: if you wanted to give even more distinction, um, you can change up stuff like you can give it a fake bold. Uh, or you can give it italics. You can really sort of get creative with uh, making it look however you want. Um, but now I wanna show you something that you can do 
in terms of styling. Let's say, for example, that uh, I wanted these all to be capitalized, but I've got a capital first letter and lowercase other letters. So it's like, ah, well, I have to go back and retype everything out. You actually don't have to do that. What you can do instead is you can highlight everything and then underneath uh, here where we did the, the fake bold and the fake italics here, we can actually do this thing called all caps. Click on that feature here and it'll automatically make everything all capitalized. And we didn't have to go back and change anything. It knows how we typed it in originally and it knows you know the font within the computer and we can take that off and we can bring it back to normal if we'd like. Uh, but then there's there's another one that I really find interesting. It's called small caps. You can uh, click on that and you can see that everything's capitalized still. But now instead you have a bigger letter up front and then the rest is kind of smaller. And But everything's still capitalized. It's just a really interesting design choice that helps to give it a little bit of, uh, I don't know, what, what how do you call it? It's like it's a little bit of... Uh, interesting style and that helps it to feel professional, but it's just got a unique look to it. I, I really like this look and you'll see this actually done a lot of times in these cast lists and in uh, the end credits of movies because it's easier to read capital letters, but there's a professionality to capital and then lowercase with everything. So this sort of splits the difference and you're getting that sort of look of capital and lowercase, but it's still easy to read because everything's in uppercase. Anyways, so that's just a nice little interesting feature here. So let's click play here and uh, you can see that I have it at one quarter resolution. Let me bring it here. There we go. Full resolution. That's looking awesome. We're starting to really get a good look here to our end credit sequence. Now let's show how to do one last little section here. Let's say, for example, that uh, we have one last group here at the end. We have our production assistants. Uh, fun fact, I used to be a production assistant back in the day when I first moved to the city that I currently find myself in. Um, it was... Not the, not the best job in the world. It's a pretty thankless job, but it's one that's infinitely important to uh, to the production. So to all you production assistants out there, I, I know your pain. Ah, I made a mistake here. I accidentally created uh, that production assistants uh, title in a different layer other than our rolling credits. So it does not work, but you don't have to lose all that work. Let's say for example, it was a big list that you created and you noticed afterwards, oh my goodness, like I made a terrible error. You can actually go inside of the production assistants uh, text layer here in your timeline and copy this layer here within your essential graphics panel. Copy, and you can get rid of this whole layer. Now click on this and then click on uh, the empty space here in your essential graphics window and then click paste, boom. It's right there inside of your essential graphics panel. You might need to find it here and move it around, but hey, we didn't lose any of that work. Let's say you had like a big list, all that work is not lost. Awesome, uh, so let's start to build out the names of our production assistants. Let's say we have uh, Jesse Smith. Terrible at coming up with names on the fly. Um, and now comes one of my favorite features in Premiere. Uh, if you were to just say, let's uh, make a bunch of these layers here, just like with aligning text so that it's centered within the frame here, it's really tough to kind of get the aligning of all of these to be perfectly identical. So how do you know for a fact that you've got it so that all of these spacings are, are completely equal? Because like, oh, it's, it's kind of, it's really tough to get. So there's a feature here inside of your essential graphics panel that I find to be an absolute lifesaver. All you got to do to activate it is click on one of those text boxes, then hold shift, click on another, click on another, click on another. And actually, I'm just going to move these ones way over so you see how big of a difference this is. And then you're gonna click this box here, which is distribute horizontally. Click that and everything is perfectly distributed from left to right. And now if we say, for example, change up some of these names, um, Zach Efron, uh, Morgan Freeman. I really hope I'm spelling these at least somewhat decently. It still retains that centering because we have everything center aligned so it's stemming from the middle, and so it's not really, so even though this name is closer to this one than it is from this one, the center of all these is still aligned properly. Just keep in mind though, this won't perfectly center everything from left to right. Let's say for example that we have all these shifted over slightly, and we do the same thing again. Uh, this distribute horizontally will only make it within the boundaries of the two most extreme pieces of text here. So just keep that in mind when you use it. Uh, you'll just have to make sure that these two are in the sort of placement that you want them to be. 
and then everything else will follow suit. Great. Let's take all of these, let's move them up a little bit. And lo and behold here, we have an awesome looking credit sequence. But there's just one last thing that we need to do here. We need to go through our entire credit sequence and make sure that our styling is cohesive. What do I mean by that? Well, if you look at my titles here, we have one here that's upper and lowercase. We have one here that's all uppercase and we have one here that's small caps. Differences like these can look nice if you're being intentional with your style, but it also risks looking messy and uncoordinated. So our final task here is to go through all of our text and just make sure that everything looks cohesive. This can also include the size of text. I'm gonna choose small caps for everything. And once we've made a final pass through, this is our final result. So now after that long deep dive, I really hope you feel a lot more comfortable creating your own rolling credits inside of Premiere Pro. It's one of those things that even when you know how to do it properly, it still does take a little bit of time to set up. So if you wanted to save time here at Motion Array, we have rolling credit templates that you can use to just quickly get the process done in a flash. But here's the thing, there is one other way that you can help to spice up your credit sequences. You might've noticed if you've watched movies that at the very beginning of the credit sequences, there's the big flashy version of it that they use. If it's an action movie, for example, you might see all of these names presented around crazy intense elements. Or if it's something more like a Pixar movie, you might see a more creative, softer presentation. You can have the first little bit of your end credit sequence be this big flashy opener and then fade out and then have your credit roll. There's literally nothing stopping you from taking two different types of end credit sequences and jamming them together to make something even more amazing. But guys, that's it for me. I really hope you found this interesting and that you got something new and fresh out of it. If you did, consider subscribing, liking, and uh, give us a comment to tell us what you're interested in seeing in the future. But that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. I can't wait to see you in the next video video.